right, so I might give up, not give up, I might stop going live as much and do these videos <clears throat> now that I have my own YouTube channel for the kayak catfishing tournaments, just because I can clean them up and chop them up however I want going forward. Uh, we will do live videos going forward every now and then, um, just because of the interaction, uh, you know, if we start to grow, answer questions in real time, but I can put out a much cleaner product this way. So mid-month check-ins will probably be recorded videos. Captain's meetings will probably be live. Um, real quick, what you see up on the screen right now, that's uh, <clears throat> sannydrifters.com. Jimmy Smith runs this. He also has a YouTube channel, uh, Fishing and Gear, right here. Catches awesome fish. Um, I love watching it. And he, he's just like me. We, we use copyrighted music. It's fantastic. And he, he uses Hair Nation music, which makes me even happier. Um, but I wanted to shout him out. He is our only true sponsor. Uh, I consider a sponsor someone who is giving you stuff for free consistently. And he committed to us for this entire year to give the first two non-cashing participants of the open month long a pack of Sandy Drifters. Uh, and really quick, Ronnie Paulin, yours are in the mail this week. <clears throat> I forgot last month. It, that's all me. But I talked to Jimmy, and Jimmy's going to mail them directly from himself going forward. I'm going to give him the names and address, and he's going to mail them directly go, uh, himself going forward. It's not fair for me to screw up, forget to mail them, and then that makes our scene and him look bad. And that's not fair to the scene, and that's not fair especially to Jimmy if I forget to go to the post office. Um, so yeah, Jimmy had them to me like a month ahead of time, and it's my fault for not getting them out the door. All right. Now that that's out of the way, coming on, I just want to shout these guys out. Um, uh, Danny Rimmer, I believe his name is, Never Lost Anchors. He's also been hooking me and a lot of other um, kayak anglers, or kayak anglers, kayak anglers up with, uh, with anchors. Moving on, upcoming tournaments will hit first. This weekend, this Saturday, is our in-person bluegrass catfish bass. Bluegrass catfish bass bash say that 10 times fast um it's this upcoming saturday um this is where you go and sign in for i know there's a lot of anglers that are going to be participating so this one angler signed up isn't a good reflection of who's going to be there at the moment it's on kentucky lake um i can't remember exactly how many fishes it's going to be your four biggest fish on the day there's going to be a biggest fish it's a 100 dollars straight entry 10 dollars that will automatically go, go towards big fish um, the identifier will be released 10 minutes before go time. Uh, this is a more expensive, more serious in-person tournament. So we are tightening up, uh, the identifier when it releases, etc., just to ensure no cheating. We haven't had, we've literally had zero issues on cheating. Um, so knock on wood, hopefully that continues going forward. Um, mishaps in the rules, but that's, that, that's going to happen. And that, that's, that's just standard with running an event, but actual cheating. We haven't even had anyone come close to actual cheating. <clears throat> the very following weekend on April 3rd, we're going to have a $50 in-person tournament at Tanner's Creek, Indiana with a $10 optional big fish. So $60 total, $50, uh, buy-ins, $10 optional big fish. This is not going to be put online. This one's going to be an old school in person tournament where you do we we're, we're going to do all the money in person and on top of that we're going to do the photos in person you're going to have to meet at Tanner's Creek boat ramp and uh before and after to you know submit the pictures to each other do the judging uh right now we don't have the time uh predetermined but we're probably going to do an hour after the boat launch and for leaving and an hour after the boat return for our um, for our weigh-ins, for our lengthens, as you want to call them. The reason for this, we don't want to like this is a pre um, this is a pre-made boat event, and Vince Nadowski is running this. And the deal I made with him is I am filming his boat event in return for being able to have a kayak division alongside of it. Um, and to stay out of their way, if we leave an hour after and come back an hour after. There should be no issues of us getting in the boater's way. Now, is there the possibility of us jumping in one of their spots during the tournament? Yeah, but we're also limited on where we can go. We realistically can only travel so far in our kayaks. 
they're all in boats. They have the entire river. They literally have 50 to 100 miles plus that they can travel in their boats if they want to. Uh, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal, you know, us fishing wells a little bit closer to Tanner's Creek. Also, this is a trailering event. The Ohio River very well could be blown out because of the rain. You're going to have to be at Tanner's Creek at launch. And then you're going to have to be at Tanner's Creek by a certain time. But you can trailer from Tanner's Creek anywhere you want uh, as long as you're fishing within two miles of the Ohio River. So you can launch in a tributary and fish within two miles of the Ohio River anywhere you want as long as you leave from Tanner's Creek and come back to Tanner's Creek within the specified time frames. Those specified time frames will be posted once those are official. Um, I thought they were right here, but I could be wrong. All right, I'm going to make it official. The launch for us is going to be at 9 a.m., and the return time for us is going to be 5 p.m. What that means is you have to be at Tanner's Creek, and we all have to be in the same area at the boat launch by 9 a.m., and then that same exact area, you have to be back by 5 p.m., and I'll probably pause the video here real quick. I'm going to show you exactly where you have to be. Tanner's Creek has two boat launches. This is the big boat launch. This is the little boat launch. We ha you have to, we're going to make the cutoff. You have to be in person, physically in person, past this line right here by 5 p.m. If your truck is pulling in here and when it turns 5 p.m., you are disqualified. To trailer, you have to be, there will be a perpendicular line drawn right here, and I will be standing at it at 5 p.m., or a judge will be standing at it at 5 p.m. you got to be in here. If you are in your kayak and you're coming back up Tanner's Creek, you got to be from the dock up to this dock. you got to be in this general area by 5 p.m. with your kayak. If someone's standing on the kayak and they're looking straight across the river, 5 p.m. rolls around and you're over here, you are disqualified. So if you are on the Tanner's Creek body of water, you got to be past the dock, past the big boat dock, and in between the big boat dock and the little boat dock by 5 p.m. If you are trailering, your body, your person has to be past this line right here by 5 p.m. So that's how we're gonna that's how we're gonna run that. Uh, because they're running 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., we're going to run 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. All right. Um, we are here on the Kayak and Cats regional page. These are the current standings as I know them as of noon today. So Ryan Bortz is winning at 152 inches. Oh, the format for this month is one big and four under 32 inches. And the uh, Ryan's winning at 152. I'm in second at 143. McKinley, David McKinley's in third at 89.5. And Eric Jacobs, that jerk, has two flatheads. And he's in fourth right now at 61.25. So those are the current standings for that. Um, and now I'm actually recording this after the fact. Now on to the uh, national scene standings because I forgot to record this while I was doing the regular stuff. Over to your current standings for March. You got Dan Scheider leading uh, the Open with 294 inches. That's to some hogs. Actually, I'm going to click on a wolf so we can actually look at some fish. All right, so that's the 46 and a half incher. I believe this is big fish on the month too. See how it's bumped up? Nice. You got your identifiers. Very good. All the way over here, 46. There's that half inch line. Uh, technically, I could probably give him 47.75, but he, there's probably a reason he submitted at 47 and a half. Uh, so I'm going to take his word on it and not bump it up to uh, 0.75. There's been a few times where I would be fishing multiple tournament scenes and I would submit a, we'll just say a 25 inch fish to both of them. Well, then one judge might think it's 25.25 and he bumps it up to 25.25. Now I have the identical fish in two completely different tournaments submitted at two different lengths. That makes me as the angler look bad. That's why if somebody submits a fish and they submit themselves short, I will not bump them up because they more than likely submitted that fish to every other tournament that that fish qualifies for at that length. And I don't want that fish to be different lengths amongst different tournaments. Because that, that makes that the optics of that 
is that the angler is cheating trying to get more inches in another tournament when that's not the case. The case is a judge might have just gave him more length. So that's why I won't touch. If you submit short, I won't touch it. All right. That's it for the slot over to – or for the open over to the slot. We got our boy JJ Justin Johnson. Uh, he's winning it with Kai Catfish. I don't, I'm not going to really click on these because, I mean, if you want to go in and look, go in and look at these on your, or on your own, but these are slot fish. They can only be so big, so there's nothing really special to look at. But if you want to go in and look at uh, these fish, I'm just going to go over the positions. Justin Johnson, uh, pretty close to a perfect score. He's, a, he's an inch away from a perfect score. And we have about 10 days to go. Uh, Ronald or Donnie Burnett is right behind him uh, by two inches. Then we have Dan Scheida. Ryan Bortz, uh, myself, Clint Seeger, and Ethan Miller. All right. Uh, actually, oh, this is great. Dan has a fish. I'm going to go judge it. All right, so I definitely probably just cut the video there because when I click on manage entry, it gives me the coordinate numbers. And you can go make do a Google search with the coordinate numbers, and I don't want anyone else to see it. So... I'm going to go through the – I'm going to approve it. All right, I went through and approved it. Um, I'm probably not going to show the approval process because it does give out specific coordinates, um, and I'm not doing that to another angler in the seat. And then you have, look, Ryan Bortz, followed up by myself, Clint Seeger, and Ethan Miller. And finally, the in-person tournament that we had at Cohen Lake, we had six guys show up. Uh, I'm going to be really quick on this. I won it with three fish. Ryan Bortz came in second uh, with – one fish and yeah uh no more to talk about that if you want to go see me catching the fish in that tournament i posted a video but any questions let me know um we'll be back with a captain's meeting we might do one electronically live down at kentucky lake for the bluegrass bash but it just depends on service and reception all right i'll see you guys later have a good one